Hi, my name is Tweed. I'm going to be talking about Ozempic, which is the semaglutide injection in the 0.5 and 1 milligram. So a brief introduction is that Ozempic is a GLP-1 agonist. It is given subcutaneously. Ozempic is indicated as an adjunct to diet and exercise to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes mellitus and also to reduce the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events, uh, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, or non-fatal stroke, in adults with type 2 diabetes mellitus and established cardiovascular disease. It decreases A1C by 0 0.5 to 1.5% and decreases postprandial blood glucose. So patient counseling for Ozempic, you should administer subcutaneously into the abdomen, thigh, or upper arm at any time of the day, on the same day each week, with or without food. So step one, to prepare your pen with a new needle. You want to wash your hands with soap and water. And check the name and color label of your pen to make sure that it contains Ozempic. This is especially important if you take more than one type of medicine. And then pull off the pen cap. Step B, check that Ozempic in your pen is clear and colorless. Look through the pen window. If the Ozempic looks cloudy, do not use the pen. C, take a new needle and tear off the paper tab. D, push the needle straight onto the pen. Turn until it is on tight. E is to pull off the outer needle cap. Do not throw it away. F, pull off the inner needle cap and throw it away. A drop of Ozempic may appear at the needle tip. This is normal, but you must still check the Zempic flow if you use a new pen for the first time. And always use a new needle for each injection. This will reduce the risk of contamination, infection, leakage of Ozempic, and blocked needles leading to wrong dose. So step two is to check the Ozempic flow with each new pen. So you want to check the Ozempic flow before your first injection with each new pen. If your Ozempic pen is already in use, you can go to step 3 with selecting your dose and turn the dose selector until the dose counter shows the flow check symbol. Then hold the pen with the needle pointing up. Press and hold in the dose button until the dose counter shows 0. The 0 must line up with the dose pointer. A drop of Ozempic will appear at the needle tip. If no drop appears, repeat step 2 above as shown in figure G and figure H up to 6 times. If there is still no drop, change the needle and repeat step 2 as shown in figure G and figure H one more time. So step 3 is to select your dose. In figure I, you want to continue turning the dose selector until the dose counter stops and shows your 1 milligram dose, or if you're taking the 0.25 or 0.5 milligram, dashed line in the dose counter will guide you to the strength that you should be taking, whether it be 1, 0.5, or 0.25. So how much Ozempic is left? This is seen in figure J. To see how much Ozempic is left in your pen, use the dose counter. Turn the dose selector until the dose counter stops. If it shows 1, at least 1 milligram is left. If the dose counter stops before 1, there is not enough ozempic left for a full dose of 1 milligram. Step 4 is to inject your dose. You want to choose your injection site, which is the abdomen, thigh, or upper arm, and wipe the skin with the alcohol swab. Let the injection site dry before you inject your dose. Trigger L. Uh, insert the needle into your skin as your healthcare provider has shown you. Make sure you can see the dose counter. Do not cover it with your fingers. This could stop the injection. Figure M, press and hold down the dose button until the dose counter shows zero. The zero must line up with the dose pointer. You may then hear or feel a click. Uh, figure N, keep the needle in your skin after the dose counter has returned to zero and count slowly to six. If the needle is removed earlier, you may see a stream of Ozempic coming from the needle tip. 
if this happens, the full dose will not be delivered. Uh, figure O. Remove the needle from your skin. If blood appears at the injection site, press lightly. Do not rub the area. Uh, rotate injection sites weekly if injecting in the same area of the body. And avoid adjacent injections if administering other agents in the same area of the body. So after the injection, carefully remove the needle from the pen. Do not put the needle caps back on the needle to avoid needle stick. Place the needle in a sharps container right away to reduce risk of needle stick. Put the pen cap on your pen after each use to protect Ozempic from the light. As for a missed dose, this should be administered as soon as possible within five days. Resume usual schedule thereafter. If it's over five days, skip the missed dose and resume administration at the next scheduled weekly dose. And if you're changing the day of administration, allow 48 hours between the two doses. Do not mix with any other products. And you can store your pen uh, for 56 days at room temperature between 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 30 degrees Celsius or in the fridge. Uh, your pen should be disposed after 56 days, even if you still have medication left in it. Mechanism of action is that Ozempic is a GLP-1 agonist. It's an analog of the incretin hormone GLP-1. Uh, so once food enters the stomach, it goes to the small intestine. And cretins are hormones that are released from GI tract because of the nutrient ingestion. This increases insulin from the beta cells in the pancreas and decreases glucagon. Overall effect is that plasma glucose is reduced. So dosing for Ozempic starts at 0.25 mg once weekly for 4 weeks. And then it goes up to 0.5 mg once weekly for at least 4 weeks. And then um, the patient can be escalated to 1 mg once weekly if further glycemic control is needed. So the lower initial dose is intended to reduce GI symptoms. It does not provide effective glycemic control. So if changing the day of administration is necessary, allow at least 48 hours between two doses. So warnings and side effects include a black box warning for risk of thyroid C-cell carcinomas. Ozempic is contraindicated in personal or family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma or patients with multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. There is warning of pancreatitis. Uh, risk factors include history of pancreatitis, gallstones, alcoholism, or increased triglycerides. And also a warning for severe GI disease like gastroparesis. Side effects include uh, nausea, which is the primary side effect, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, hypoglycemia, and weight loss. Monitoring parameters includes blood glucose, A1C, and renal function.